Hey, welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we're going to be having an idea conversation. I'm excited about this conversation because we're going to be talking about, hey manufacturers, it's okay to ask for help. And, and to help us walk through this topic, I brought in an expert. He's the founder and CEO of Lennar International, a consulting firm that helps manufacturers really just just get their business better. And so without further ado, Ray Zaganto, welcome, sir. I appreciate it. Thanks, Chris. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So excited to have you here. And thank you so much for taking the time with our with us here on the on the show. And uh, right. you had me all amped up. I was excited to, to have this conversation. <laughs> well, let's get at it. Hey, man, absolutely. So maybe just get us started. So when you think through manufacturers, you know, why do you yeah. think some of them missed the opportunity to improve just by not asking for help? You know, it's... A lot of it's human nature. A bunch of it is their own perspective. We, we get trapped in our own heads, mm -hmm. you know, is, is what happens. And the first thing we reference is the way we used to do stuff. And and when that doesn't work anymore, you kind of double down on, uh, you know, hey, let's uh, let's keep let's keep trying that. Let's, uh, you know, I, I think we just we get stuck. And uh, and, and that that stops a lot of folks. Right, right, and it's it can be so hard sometimes to just get out to get unstuck. <laughs> right, right. So when you think about getting stuck, I mean, is it is it egos? What's 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 at play here? You know, it it can really be a lot of a lot of things. Uh, yeah, ego can be part of it. I mean, in 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 my world, uh, you know, I came up in the job shop type environment, so you had tool makers and mold makers and die makers, you know, and that type of stuff. Uh -huh. And I remember old guy I worked with at the time says, you know when something's broken, you need it fixed and it, and it ain't getting fixed. He said, it's one of two reasons. Uh, the guy asked or the lady asked either doesn't know how, or they don't want to do it. Right, <laughs> you know, so, right. so sometimes there's a, there's a few things you gotta, you gotta work past. It could be they, they, they don't have the skill to be able to do it and they're not sure how to bring it up. Mm -hmm. Uh, cause what kind of environment are they in? What do you mean? You don't know how to do this. Right. Right. You know, so, you know, culture can sometimes get in the way and, and yeah, sometimes ego does too. Uh, you know, that's, that can be a piece of it. I don't, I don't want to admit, I don't know something, right? but you know, that kind of puts you in a box you don't want to be in, you know, if you don't want to admit, you don't know something, then how are you ever going to learn? Exactly. Exactly. Huh? And, and you addressed the one thing I was thinking about with our audience, with engineers, a lot of people sure. in, in the plants and, you know, I'm, I'm thinking if I'm one of those, Hey, that's what I do. You know, I'm supposed to solve the problems. I'm supposed to figure it out. So I'm wondering is, you know, is it somewhat scary for that engineer to reach out because, you know, hey, an outsider, they couldn't possibly help me with my situation. You, you know, what's cool today. And, and I, I totally agree with you. But what's different today than like 30 years ago uh -huh. is it's I, I guess that first step to get help isn't as drastic as it used to be. I mean, if you think about it, yeah. uh, you can go online you know, somewhere you can YouTube damn near anything. That's right. You can, uh, you can find a, uh, a forum or a chat room or something like that, or just search a topic and download some articles. So, uh, you know, if you're worried about, Oh, I'm supposed to be able to solve this. Well, part of it is, you know, go, go get the information, you know, right. used to be pulled a machinist handbook off the shelf, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, right. now you, you can go online and, and get a heck of a lot more information, right. uh, to, to at least start, that journey. So uh, it may not look like asking for help, but at least you, you started that process of getting yourself unstuck. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And it really should just embrace that too. Cause I mean, that's, we all get better. I've, I've talked to so many engineers and people throughout the podcast. I'm sure you have too. And yeah. so many of the stories come back to this person helped me figure out this, or, you know, I've, I've, I got to be a better engineer because I opened up and, and, and had these opportunities. Hey, I studied electrical, but next thing you know, I'm learning all about mechanical and, yeah. and, and to do that, I have to ask for help to figure that stuff out. And, and the best places to find that and engineers learn from other engineers. Mm -hmm. uh, the, there's a, there's a whole universe full of salespeople. God bless them. I'm a recovering one myself uh, that, are, that are out there uh, sharing really good content yeah. and information uh, directed towards engineers. Right. But there's, there's a little bit of a, uh, uh, I guess, a, a communication or perhaps a confidence uh -huh. disconnect. Uh, sometimes who's saying it matters. Right. You know, the same thing said by another engineer will be accepted by an engineer. Got you, know? you got you. A little credibility there is what I'm that's, hearing. That's, that's a big part of it. Yeah. That's huge. 
Right. Absolutely. And I guess in some of that credibility, I, somebody said one time, it, it trust leads to credibility. So I guess if you have that trust as an engineer and you trust in your peers and people out there with the, as the experts, so maybe how do you get set up as the expert and, and, you know, where do you look for those areas of trust? Well, part of it, you know, kind of no matter what, what, I, what I've seen and experienced kind of in the, in the engineering community mm-hmm. uh, is there's, there's always somebody out there that's willing to help. There's, there's a no strings attached approach to it. And I think on the, the business development side and manufacturing, mm-hmm. um, we're getting better at that, uh, getting better at, let me, let me bring you some value, you know, first, right. uh, let me give you some, some best practices. Let me give you a couple of pointers, mm-hmm. you know, something like that. Here's the, you got to give before you get, you know, is, is really the thing. And engineers have historically been pretty good at this sales and marketing people are kind of getting used to the idea that, Hey, we better bring some value, uh, you know, up front and, and share some stuff. And, and I think that helps build the trust. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I mean, we talked about what happens when the engineers who may be scared to ask for help, I mean, flip that around. How could getting going and getting that resources and doing that, that, that outside influence actually help your career and, and accelerate things for you? Well, that's, that's the thing because what's going on in in manufacturing today in industry in the world in general the rate of change is is going on so fast and in such an unprecedented way uh there's companies everywhere big and small that are scrambling to keep up to get back in sync there so so really you know putting yourself in the position where asking for help, or even if you need to change the word, I don't want to ask for help. I want to acquire new lot, new knowledge so I can bring my business forward. Right. You know, the reality is the, the faster you are and the better you become at bringing in new knowledge, new expertise, new perspective, probably more so than anything else and applying it right. to your department, your job, your company, your company is going to advance faster. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, so it's in terms of being able to, you know, help with your career, you know, who, any, who's listening right now that uh, if they went to their boss and said, Hey, I know how I could make us bigger, better, more profitable or whatever is going to tell them, shut up and get back to work. (laughs) You know, it's like, yeah, that doesn't really happen. Does it? No. no. (laughs) How about, you know, for the listener out there now that's on the floor right now or in the plant, any yeah. mistakes that, that you see people have made when they're thinking they need to solve these problems internally and really not, you know? Yeah. The, uh, it, it can happen a lot. And, and usually what I see is, is the, the first problems that pop up or the, the marbles that end up under their feet when they're trying to solve these problems internally usually revolve around the data uh, or the okay. information they're using to solve the problem. Okay. It either number one doesn't exist um, it's, it's anecdotal, you know, gosh, darn it. That thing, that thing goes down at least 10 times a week. Mm-hmm. How do you know? Are, are, is anybody logging? Has that been logged anywhere? Do you, you know, what do you have that you're, that you can go back to that, that, uh, that you can really put a stake in the ground and say, yep, I believe this. So right. it's the presence of the data. Is it the right, uh, data that you're, that you're looking at? Mm-hmm. Uh, is the data accurate? Do you go back to double check to see, you know, did this really happen or did somebody jack or did somebody never reset the timer or whatever right. uh, to be able to check things? So usually that's where the, the first problem comes up. The other area can be sometimes what's influencing, say, my department. The solution might be in the, the department before me. You know okay. what I mean? And, okay. and sometimes getting help or building that bridge, depending on the company culture. You know, in uh-huh. some organizations, you might be able to go back and tell the material handler, it's like, man, you're starving my machine. The reason I have so many stoppages is because that bar stock's not making it where it, it's it's not queued up and ready for me right. when I'm when I'm ready to get to next. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, sometimes those things can be can be worked out uh, internally. So culture's a piece. Data is the other part. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, from the yeah. data standpoint, I always when you were th- saying. <clears throat> when you were walking through that, I was thinking, trust, but verify, you know, oh, but yeah. let's make sure our data is right. And it's, it's telling us the, the correct information. But the second piece from the culture, I was talking to an engineer um, 
recently and he he mentioned two things and he's a young engineer yeah. uh, he's been in industry for a couple of years he's like the yeah. biggest thing that i've learned coming out of school is like i have to figure i had to figure out how to coordinate with others yeah. and to, to get stuff done he was electrical background he's like but yeah. man I, just figuring out the mechanical the civil you know the different things was inside the within the plant uh yeah. and then being flexible so i mean i think you, you really touched on both of those yeah. One of the things I'm seeing in some of the, the better run uh, plants that I've seen uh -huh. uh, working with some aerospace and some other areas is they're starting to, to structure the business more around the ability to, to problem solve. And one of the ways you do that is in, instead of the typical hierarchy that shows, you know, president, the vice president, the directors, the operations, stuff like that, uh -huh. they'll structure around process. Okay. Because process cuts all the way across the whole organization. Right. So while, you know, a, a particular process owner, which might be, um, you know, order entry, you know, schedule, you know, whatever those things have to happen to be, um, you know, the, the owner of that process uh, has access across the whole organization to make sure that that process is followed with discipline and integrity. And no matter where that process owner sits on the org chart, right. even even the you know the director or whatever that's that's over that you know that might be higher on the on the org chart has to follow the lead of that process owner. Okay. So which which I thought was kind of interesting because it, it takes away some of that. Well, that's not my department. Right. I got yeah. news for you. If if you're counting on that department to give you feedback uh -huh. for this process to work effectively. You do work for that department. No kidding. I mean, that's a, that's a wonderful way to structure it. I mean, are you seeing that being adopted more and more? It takes a certain level of uh, maturity uh, uh -huh. to be able to do that. I see a lot of interest in it. And I see the first time I saw it, and I've, I've run factories for 30 years. Right. The, the first time I saw it, I'm like, son of a gun. <laughs> you know, it was like, this is pretty smart. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a pretty clever way to do it. And it, it's, it's not a panacea, you know, for everywhere, but, um, yeah. It's a darn interesting model. What's I mean, you know, so and, and it does address a lot of things. Andy Grove, uh, former what CEO, uh, chairman of, of Intel, he's he's got some interesting writings. And his thing about management was, uh, you know, you have teams that are really empowered, and a manager's job isn't to micromanage that team. Right. A manager's impact is at the intersection when the work from one team transitions over to that other team. Make sure it's smooth. Right. That's where the managers live and work. Sure. You know, sure. To be effective. And this this idea of structuring along process uh, it very much kind of mirrors that thinking. No, no kidding. I mean, so I mean, from that from that structure, what's the biggest hurdle you think that would hold people back from actually embracing it? Uh, well, that it, a lot of it is culture because yeah. Yeah. what has to happen is there's a lot of surrendering of historical authority. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, well, I'm used to being the boss. Look, here's here's where I am on the earth. What do you mean if the person down down here that owns this process says no to me? <laughs> right. I, I have to I have to reinforce them. So it's it's like a lot of change management initiatives. If there if there really isn't clear and visible support right. from the very top of the organization saying, nope, we're gonna do this. Right. You know, right. meaning that if you're gonna empower that person on the line or, or in the, you know, in operations to own that process all the way through the right. GM or the president or the owner of the company needs to be the one that if they, if they see an issue coming up, they back up, uh, you know, they break the ties, right. They, you know, they back up that, that new structure that's being put in place. So people get confidence in it. Yeah, absolutely. That's where it works. That's where the organizations works. that are running it that way. That's how it works. Okay. You know, I've seen GMs, in, in production meetings get put back in, on their heels because they were wrong, but the person that owned the process was comfortable enough to be able to stand their ground and, and everybody got it. They made right. their case with data. Yeah. Yeah, and, and they weren't gun shot to actually speak truth. No. Mm -mm. You know? Not at all. And that's just part, and that's empowering. Yeah. It's empowering to do that. That's, you know? that's awesome. So, I mean, yeah. I know when we were, were prepping for the conversation, you mentioned, yeah. you mentioned some analogies that stood out, you know, sometimes these manufacturers, they, they have a, uh, a pinched nerve and they think it's just a bad shoulder, you yeah. know? So, so sometimes any, any examples where, where people were misdiagnosing problems that you've run across that you think maybe be valuable, valuable for our listeners. I see that a lot. Okay. Uh, part of the, the don't ask for help is 
Well, uh, one of the one step down from there is I'm going to ask for help, but I'm going to tell you what I need you to fix. Okay, right, <clears throat> right. And and then you get in there, and and what do I find? A problem with data. <laughs> you know, they're looking at they're looking at old stuff. They're looking at the wrong stuff. Yeah. Um, especially now, they go. Through, uh, I see it all the time. Businesses go through a downturn, and unfortunately, start cutting and cutting and cutting. Um, and they, they think they're doing the right thing by cost and for costs until they figure out that they got rid of somebody that had a ton of institutional knowledge. And now we don't know how to schedule anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, we quit doing uh, some follow ups and, and tracking and data logging on on our vendors, on our supply chain. Um, you know, we're, we're nobody is following up with the customer on um, you know push-ins or pull-outs and, and stuff like that inventories ballooning so you know right. it'll start with go fix this until you find out that's not your problem it's here you know? right absolutely absolutely and then you know so maybe for our listeners who, are, who aren't familiar with like your company Lenara for for, for example you know yeah. what types of services and and from the consulting standpoint do you do you find yourselves you know working with and helping people solve it, it really runs the gamut, which is, which is awesome. That's, okay. that's kind of why I'm, I'm here and, and doing this. I work, uh, I have a, a group of awesome people that I call in that are, that are experts in, in particular areas. Uh, my, my superpower, if anything, is I, I come at it like, like I've, I'm responsible for the whole organization. So I take a very holistic approach. Okay to what's going on. And I've, I've got an ability to be able to connect, you know, the front end of the business, the, the demand generation, uh, the marketing, the sales, all of those types of things all the way through the operations. Right. Cause if they're disconnected mm-hmm. uh, in any way and in the slightest way, you're at best, you're missing out on opportunities at worst, you're, you're losing ground and, and probably money. So right. help with everything from, uh, helping companies develop strategies and tactics around around growth, which is a big topic these days. Sure, certainly. Sure. Um, operational excellence, um, just kind of establishing the foundations, or in many cases, reestablishing uh, the foundations for consistency. Okay. Uh, you know, in an organization, because it it revolves around people, processes, and tools. Mm-hmm. And if you can build some simple simple metrics and communication tools around that. And more importantly, some routines, communication routines, you're going to get more predictable results. Yeah. So those are, those are the areas that I, I help out with. And I, I just love talking shop yeah. uh, with, with manufacturing owners and, and talking factory. And usually that's where it starts Oh, no doubt. with a conversation. I've got to do the same thing, establish a level of credibility. Yeah. Um, and then see if, if there's a fit, uh, if there is, what are the possible steps? If not, who can I recommend them to? Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, a lot of our conversations, Ray, we've, we've talked about things from uh, digital transformation, you know, yeah. the industry 4.0, the, sure. even we, we get down to the, the smart level devices, the IIOT devices, right. just curious what you're hearing out there from the manufacturers. Do you support around some of those types of initiatives and the hurdles people are seeing from a digital transformation standpoint? Cause I mean, it's, it's all about, like you said, improving those processes, making the plants flow, utilizing the data to make better decisions in the moment, things like that. So just, just curious on your take there. I think some of it is, uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan. I've, I've been at this a while and what is possible in terms of uh, innovation and improvement uh-huh. uh, for manufacturing today because of industry 4.0, industrial IoT and those things, it's like nothing I've ever seen. Um, the, the challenge that a lot of manufacturers are, are facing right now is, and I think I shared this with you, you know, 25, 30 years ago, if you wanted a 15% improvement in your, in your throughput, you put in equipment that was 15 or 20% faster than what you already had. Right. Everybody could wrap their head around that. If that was a new CNC machine that was faster and more accurate, maybe the only difference was instead of the controller being on this side, now it's on this side. Right. But otherwise your shop floor and everybody could look at it and go, yeah, I get this. I can see it. Industri- yep. Industrial IoT and layering in an MES system and, and the decision-making required, that is that kind of gets to the heart of it interrupts or it disrupts uh, that person and process. I mentioned people, processes, and tools. Yeah. Or you could get improvement just with the tools. Now the improvement's coming because of people and processes. That's where it gets personal. 
Gotcha. You know, and that's where people get kind of wonky about, Ooh, I'm, I'm, am I giving up control? Right. Um, you know, or for managers and supervisors. Now, for this stuff to really work, you need to be listening to the group leader who's right. coming to you saying, the data says this, my response is that, right. you know, uh, in spite of way, the way we used to do it. Yeah. So again, it's it's very much a change management sure. uh, exercise that's that's happening out there. So the the manufacturers that get it are are starting small and and building on something, um, and that's the smart way to do it. Whether it's basic machine monitoring, uh, you know, condition monitoring, right. uh, and build and grow from there. But if you don't have the buy-in of top management and you don't get the buy-in on the shop floor. Yeah. No matter how much money you throw at it, right. it's not going to work. Right. Exactly. And we've heard that feedback uh, on one of our recent conversations, and, and she mentioned the guest, think big and act small, you yeah. know, and, and, and yeah. think about what can scale, but also what you can accomplish right now yeah. to get yeah. to, to win some advocates over. And I, I think that's, I'm hearing you say the same thing. It's absolutely the, the, the same thing. I, the, the variant of that that I've heard is uh, uh, think big, act small, act now. Okay. You know, get 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 going, get going. On, on something. But you're you're absolutely right because you you know, the the tech people come in and and will will paint this vision because everybody wants to jump to the transformational side right. of the of the digital journey. We all want to get the transformation. Nobody wants to you know eat their vegetables up front or you know go jogging do do the do the aerobics that are necessary to get there. That's that's one of the challenges. The the other thing too is it is only going to be as effective as the team you have that's implementing it. Right. And you may find, and I've seen this in companies that are looking to implement new ERP systems and they're all excited and they get it rolled out only to find out that some of the people that have been doing it manually have very limited dexterity, you know, on computers. Right. And it's like, Oh man, we got to stop and go back and do some basic, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Microsoft training, yeah. you know, with them just to, just to get some familiarity. So, you really have to be realistic yeah. about where you are. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. Right. Uh, I'm just saying know where you are, snap a baseline, and every day make 1% progress. That's just, right. That's right. Just move the needle and, and bring those folks along with you. You're helping them. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, back when we had a job shop and we the first time we rolled out software on that job shop floor, there was a learning curve, so we had to oh, yeah. we we had to really slow step that process. And at the end, you know, of a couple of years, you had all technicians, mechanics, machinists. They were all entering data on, on the software, but uh, it didn't happen overnight. Oh no, it 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 doesn't. And I listen. I've been that guy. You know, so you learn the most from your mistakes. You know, I've yeah. I've been that guy early on where it's like this is awesome, and if we can get the whole plant to awesome, you know, in three months, I know they're telling me 18 months, ah, right. let's ram it through, yeah. you know, and then things will be great, and you end up creating another disaster, yeah. you know, of your of your own doing, Yeah, uh, that hurts. I mean, so I guess you probably see that as, as really hurting more than helping at that point, because it, it, oh. you've probably lost all some credibility, lost some trust. Lost some good people. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was brutal. Yeah. It was absolutely brutal, and you know, you, you just got to own it and then move on because everybody thinks, you know, I'll, I'll find my way around this. And it's like, okay, sure. But there, there are signs and, and I'm not, I'm not saying don't try it. I'm trying not to be that, that old guy that says, well, let me tell you the way some organizations can pull it off. Yeah. It's just, you got to recognize along the way, if you, if you start to bump up against, you know, some limiting factors, right. Uh, you got to know when to, when to step back and catch yeah. your breath. And, and sometimes in front of your team, admit that maybe you were going too quick and maybe somebody in that group was right. Yeah, <laughs> you know? absolutely. How about, how about, you know, industrial groups or anything like that that you uh, coordinate with or communicate with If people want to learn. I mean, we're trying to connect people here with this in manufacturing, anything yeah. you recommend there, wherever you are in the United States or in the world, there is a, uh, a, a group of some sort, whether it's, whether it's an industry specific, a trade group, mm -hmm. something like that. The MEPs, uh, that are out there, the state and federal funded uh, groups that are out there to help, um, you know, are awesome. Uh, what I find more and more is the, the the tech vendors and the people that are providing these tools, such as your organization. Right. You know, you're you're out there, not just evangelizing for the technology, but but sharing information for uh, for your your clients and your targets and and for the industry in general. So, right. Uh, part of that 
not asking for help, but part of uh, exercising your curiosity yeah. uh, is to get out there and either find some, you know, find some other podcasts, yeah. uh, get on LinkedIn, start following some groups mm -hmm. or find some people that are talking about things that you're interested in. You don't have to be the one that's contributing all the time. Right. It's fine to sit in the background and just suck it in because I guarantee you're going to learn something. Oh, yeah. Just consume well, sometimes, you know. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's there. Why wouldn't you? Exactly. <laughs> you know? No doubt. I mean, when we started to want to do the podcast, I mean, I was consuming a lot of content out there to figure out how to actually pull this off, you know. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, if yeah, you, want, right? you want to get good at something, you want to get good at PLC programming or drive start, whatever that may be. There's content out there that can help you, man. Exactly. And, and the thing is the, the cost of failure yeah. uh, is like nothing. Right. You know, what's, what's the cost today? Now you've got a fancy setup. You got all the mixing board and the big monitors, but you know, so that's okay. But uh, you know, little, little old me, <laughs> you know, s sitting here, I mean, the, uh, the, the cost to get online today yeah. is, is probably a couple months to somebody's cable bill. That's right. Uh, That's right. You know, and, and you're out there and your voice is being heard. No doubt. You know? And by the way, a digital, a digital background does wonders. It, it really, it, it hides a lot of I'm, stuff. I'm going to up my game, man. <laughs> I got I got to get something back there. Hey, all the credit to, uh, to our executive producer on this one. No credit here, man. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Sheets uh, pulls this off. My, my artistic ability quit when I was about 10. So. <laughs> I hear you, but this, this has been so much help for, for our listeners out there, Ray, you've, you've really brought yeah. a lot of information we get to the heart of the show is the why, and we, yeah. we, we typically wrap up with the why. So, you know, if you're, if you're to speak to the manufacturer out there right now and, you, and tell them, you know, why is it important to recognize the need and to have that courage to ask for help, uh, to really improve manufacturing in the future? You know, I want to get to the thing I talked about uh, near the start of, of our conversation, and yeah. that was the, the rate of change mm -hmm. that is happening around us right now. And there's a there's a concept out now. I read all kinds of weird stuff, and, and don't don't forget just reading things too. But uh, right. one of the concepts out there is called adaptive capacity. Okay. And if uh, any of the listeners want to go, you know, do some research in that area, that's really uh, something within an organization or an individual. How comfortable are you? Uh, adapting to a new environment. How mm -hmm. open are you to receiving new information, synthesizing it in a way that allows you to uh, no longer either feel that, hey, I'm behind, but perhaps you've caught up, or now that you get a feel for where that trend is going, I'm pulling ahead. Okay. So really, to me, today, the why around asking for help is because it's going to help build that internal adaptive capacity. Okay. either for an individual or for an organization, it's a, it's a muscle. It's uh, it's something that we can uh, through practice gain skill and dexterity with. Right. And, and in a world that is changing so fast, uh, being able to not freak out when a new change comes in, but perhaps embrace it as cool. Another right. challenge just came over to transom. Watch this. Yeah. So it's a it's a hold my beer moment, <laughs> you know. So Very, that, that to me that's that's what should be, and yeah. what I see successful manufacturers embracing. Okay, is they they, they want to know what's new yeah. and how they can apply it. Absolutely, good stuff, Ray. Thank thank you so much. And for our listeners, we'll put in our show notes all ways to get in touch with Ray to connect with awesome. him to to hook up with his company and, and hopefully maybe do some consulting and 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 make those improvements. You know, just having a conversation is an awesome start. Love to connect with folks on LinkedIn and uh, uh, and 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 get acquainted. I, I love talking shop no matter what. Absolutely. So please reach out. And, and remember, it's okay to ask for help, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Better believe it. That's right. Ray, you've been awesome. Thank you so much for everything today. I appreciate it, Chris. <laughs> this was a blast. Thanks so much for having me. Yes, sir. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. ECO is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.